the more practical and easier way for you to solve for engineering mechanics problem involving moment is by resolving or splitting the force which cause a moment into x and y direction so if you notice the process is very similar when you're solving for a linear force in a sengit bengit kind of direction you have to resolve it into x y and z direction The Verignan's theorem are used in the analytical process of a moment involved with force which is not in either x, y or z axis. So this method is actually quite simple and it is being used to ease uh, the calculation process involving uh, vector moment. Okay, let's say I have a beam over here and there is an external force acting on the beam which causes the beam to rotate at point O. So, such tendency to rotate will create the moment uh, vector. Lah, kan? So, in Verignan's theorem, you can ease the calculation process by resolving or splitting the direction of the force vector into the x and the y direction. One of the parameters involved in calculating the moment is the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of the force. So, if you look at the line of force Fx, so this particular distance would be distance 1, okay, the perpendicular distance from the line of action to the uh, rotation point. Uh, accordingly, you can also uh, easily determine the distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of force Y as well. So, we are going to call that distance D2. If you recall from the part 1 lecture, the scalar formula for moment is the magnitude of force multiplied with the distance Fd. So, our force in this case would involve the force in the direction of x and the direction of y. Okay, uh, sorry for my typo over there, it's not d, it's supposed to be y. So, in order to get the resultant moment of these two forces, you have to sum up the uh, Fd's value for each forces okay so for the first element which is fx it have to be multiplied with the distance perpendicular distance of d1 and for the second element of force which is fy it have to be multiplied with the perpendicular distance as well which is d2 okay many of you guys have been asking me how do you decide the direction of the moment how do you know whether it is clockwise or counterclockwise okay let me give you a very simple analogy on how you can illustrate the direction of moment okay let me first redraw the beam over here okay so the first beam is subjected to force x while the second beam is subjected to force Y. So how do we decide whether these two forces are uh, creating a moment in clockwise or counterclockwise direction? So you know the moment are acting at point O, right? Okay, so for the first uh, beam, you just elongate the line of force, okay? And you know the direction of the force is towards the right. So saya letaklah arrow banyak-banyak-banyak kat sini. Okay, now you create a circle with the point O to be the center point of the circle. Okay, that's very important. Point O, which is the rotation point of the moment, should be at the center of the circle. Okay, now you imagine if the force are moving to the right, so that is a tendency for the moment to move like this, uh, as shown. Okay, the arrow is as shown. And if you look at the rotational direction, it is a clockwise direction. So, because it is clockwise so the magnitude of your moment for force x should be negative okay that is how you decide the direction of the moment now you repeat the same process in deciding the moment direction caused by fy pula okay so you just elongate the line of force like this and then you know the direction of force is upward so if you are to draw a circle with the o to be the center point of the circle so the direction of the force will create a tendency of rotation in a counterclockwise direction so if it is counterclockwise then the magnitude of the moment caused by fy will would be positive so basically that's how you decide the direction of a moment whether it is a clockwise or counterclockwise direction okay mm -hmm. 
Okay, in this example, you are required to calculate the moment at point O. So if you look at the figure given, the direction of force is not in either the x or the y axis. So according to the Varignan's theorem, you can resolve this force into its respective x direction. We'll call it fx and also y direction and we'll call it fy. So um, this should be straightforward to you. You can calculate the magnitude of fx by multiplying the magnitude of f of 5 kN with cos 45 degrees and you will get a corresponding value of 3.5355 and the unit is kN. So accordingly, you can also calculate the magnitude of force along the y direction whereby you multiply the force uh, 5 kN with sine theta or sine 45 degree. So you will also get the same value of 3.5355 kN. Okay, now that's done. So let us uh, determine what is the perpendicular distance from the line of force Fx to the rotation point O. So you just elongate uh, the uh, line of force Fx until it reach the O point and then this would be your dx distance. Okay, so accordingly, you can also decide the perpendicular distance of Fy to the rotational point and this would be your dy okay now if i were to extract this triangle this highlighted triangle uh, we can calculate what is the magnitude of the x and dy okay before that we have to know what is the angle over here so you know the angle over here is 30 degree so 90 minus 30 degree would result to a corresponding angle of 60 degree so when you got this angle and you know the length of the beam is 3 meter you can calculate the dx value whereby um, 3 meter multiplied with cos 60 degree use your calculator and you will get a corresponding distance to be 1.5 meter okay accordingly you can also determine what is the magnitude of distance y okay similarly um, 3 meter multiplied with sine 60 this time around and you will get a corresponding value of 2.5981 meter so the total magnitude caused by these two forces would be mx plus with my. So the value of mx can be attained by multiplying fx with dx and the direction of moment caused by fx can be determined by uh, projecting the line of the fx and then draw like an imaginary circle with the rotation point as the center point. From this sketch, you know that the direction of moment caused by fx will be in clockwise direction. So if you are assuming counterclockwise to be positive, so the fx dx would be negative. Okay, accordingly, you can find the moment y by multiplying the force y with dy. So, what is the direction of moment y? So, you just project the line of force like this, create an imaginary circle with a uh, rotation point as the center point. And from this illustration, you will know that the direction of this moment would be in clockwise direction as well. So, the magnitude over here would be negative lah juga. Okay, so quite simply, we substitute the value of fx of 3.54 kN over here. Okay, you can write the full apa, 4 titik perpuluhan ni lah. But in this case, saya nak cepat. So, I just look at 2 titik perpuluhan. And then the dx is 1.5 meter. Don't forget the negative sign. And also minus with fy, which is 3.54 kN. And the distance of um, y is 2.59 meter. So, just use your calculator and you will get a corresponding value of negative 14.514 and the unit if you notice it will be in kilo newton meter so you can also rewrite this answer as 14.514 kilo newton meter but please indicate what is the direction of this resulting moment which is if it is negative then the direction would be a clockwise direction okay that's the uh Okay, that is all for now. That is the fundamental and basic principles of moment. So, in the next session, we are still in the chapter 4 of force system resultants. But then this time around, we are going to apply the concept of equilibrium when solving for mechanics problem involving moment. Till then, see you later alligator.